a lot of NHL news and some trade rumors to take a look at here today. We're looking at some teams like the Montreal Canadiens. The Vancouver Canucks are going to continue to be busy. The St. Louis Blues, Minnesota Wild, New York Islanders, plus the latest updates on Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane's future in Chicago. Update on the Senators' sale to new ownership. And we also have updates as well. A potential new stadium series game in Florida. A signing and more injury updates as well. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and some trade rumors to take a look at here today. Uh, let's get started first with another signing out of Nashville. Uh, we've had a couple of Nashville signings here recently. Uh, they've signed forward Thomas Novak. He's appeared in 20 games for the Preds this year, putting up 11 points. Uh, he's uh, getting a one-year, one-way contract this time because he's currently on a two-way deal, valued at 800000 So it's obviously a contract well-earned. Another player who's kind of worked his way up, but a little bit of a lesser known player gets himself a one-way deal for next season after some hard work this year we also got reports today from kevin weeks and elliot freeman's touch on it as well in his latest 32 thoughts column that the nhl is considering a stadium series game in the state of florida as i mentioned before we've heard rumblings about a potential outdoor game of some capacity in florida but obviously like weather and the warm temperatures are certainly a, a concern it's not like they can't pull it off they've had outdoor games in warmer climates before so it can be done i'm sure there's a little bit more risk involved and a little bit more uh, work compared to some colder areas uh but it obviously would be expected that it would be the lightning against the panthers um and it would be um at a different stadium than the state of florida so it looks like that might be something that we might see uh for next season so we'll have to stay tuned details have not been confirmed by the nhl and uh, that's just the latest run place from behind the scenes here so far uh, one injury update as well. Uh, Vancouver Canucks are going to be without forward Jack Stadnika for a little bit. Uh, they're currently on a road trip uh, after the All-Star break, and they've sent him home. Uh, so apparently, he's been quite ill, dealing with some sort of non-COVID illness, uh, and he was bad enough that he needed to be put on an IV. Uh, so obviously, that's usually you know not a good sign that you're able to you know keep food and fluids down. So obviously, um, you know he's not doing well. They sent him home so he can properly recover and rest. Uh, it will be uh, off the Roster for at least the, the remainder of the road trip. After that, I'll have to wait and see uh, how he recovers. So um, hopefully he's is doing better soon. Uh, the Canucks uh, also has other news here. Of course, we've heard rumblings lately from a few different media sources that president of hockey operations, Jim Rutherford, uh, has been kind of regretting taking on that job and might already want out. And of course, that came from uh, big media outlets uh, like Sportsnet. Now, he is denying that publicly. Uh, for the first time since those reports have come out. Uh, he's always denying all reports that he wants out. Uh, I think he's clear that he probably understands that if he resigns from this post, given his age, how things went, uh, is probably the end of the road for him. It might be the end of the road for him, regardless of how long he stays in this role with the Canucks. I mean, like I said, just given how long he's been around, and given his age, hard to say how long he'll keep working in the NHL. Um, it's probably not the way he'd want to end his, his managerial career uh, in hockey. So, uh, clearly things have not gone the greatest there. I think uh, he has some probably regrets over how the whole Bruce Boudreaux coaching thing was handled. I know at least he seemed that way when they had their uh, press conference after Rikaka was officially announced, officially hired. But uh, for right now, he's denying that he wants out. I suspect he sticks with it for at least a while. We'll see, though, how things go. I do know from other reports we've heard over the years is just from a lot of rumblings from Vancouver Media and different uh, people that have talked and had did signed connections. That the ownership there, uh, Aquilini, is really difficult to deal with. And, of course, uh, at his role as president, he would be the main buffer between hockey ops and, and ownership. So, clearly, he would deal with the ownership a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that's not an easy task. Uh, but that, that was kind of set up for like to be a problem in Aquilini for the get-go, where Aquilini hired the coach himself before he hired a new GM or president. So, uh, you know, that's, that's usually not a good way to go about doing things. So we also got uh, more news from the NHL uh, PA and their new leader that's expected to come this week. We have more updates. This one was from uh, Frank Sarah Valley earlier saying that, uh, of course, because a few days ago there was rumblings that it was going to be Marty Walsh. Uh, we would take over for Donald Fair. Now that's uh, more confirmed by Frank Sarah Valley saying that he's expected to be named the new uh, executive director of the NHL PA, likely as early as the end of the week, uh, currently, of course, he's in the U.S. federal government as the, the Secretary of Labor, and he's expected to resign from that post, which I've seen in other 
um, political accounts talked about this on Twitter with a mention that he is expected to vacate his position there. Now, there's been also some concerns that have popped up on Marty Walsh as the uh, director here uh, as well. Of course, he's uh, been in politics a long time, also has a, uh, you know, a union background, which is why, you know, that skill set and experience makes a good sense for the PA to consider him for this job. Uh, but he you know, at one point was the mayor of Boston, of course, Bruins owner Jeremy Jacobs um, donated to his political campaign. Uh, so did uh, John Henry, who was the uh, owner uh, one of the principals with the uh, Fenway Group, uh, the, the Red Sox and the Penguins. So there's a couple, a couple of NHL owners that have ties to this guy. Um, he certainly, you know, he's there to represent the players. So it, it, this, it could create a potential conflict if there's too many relationships with ownership. And, uh, you know, on the NHL side, you're representing the players, you're negotiating against them. Is he going to have their best interests at heart? They're certainly trying to avoid a big mistake because I, I know for a fact that there's a really good in the business model. And you look at compared to other major professional sports, uh, other like athletes in, in football, basketball, baseball, their salaries and their earnings really have grown at a way higher rate than hockey players have in the last 20 years. Uh, they certainly have a lot to be concerned about for the future, in my opinion. And they certainly don't want to have another scenario like they had with uh, Alan Eagleson all those years ago as well. So they need to make sure they get this right. Uh, so I know there are some that are quite high on Walsh being the uh, the new executive director, but uh, we'll see if any concerns pop up to the point that it creates an issue to getting the vote passed to confirm him. So Walsh well, stay tuned to be seen, but according to sources uh, and from Frank Sir Valley's reports, it sounds like it's a done, pretty much a done deal, and that should be official by the end of the week. Now, it's also been noted here now, TSN Insider Treaty and uh, Chris Johnson talking about the fact that the Ottawa Senators' sales expected the top somewhere over $800 million. Uh, that's not overly shocking or surprising. I know the last valuation, I believe, in Forbes was somewhere between six and seven hundred million. I can't remember the exact amount. I think maybe six fifty, something to that effect. But the fact that they're gonna, have, you know, come with a real solid potential for a brand new downtown arena that's gonna push that value up even higher wouldn't be shocked. I don't know if it'll hit a billion, but it certainly could be uh, valued at you know at least eight, if not nine hundred million, uh, in the next year or two. Um, just for reference purposes, Eugene Melnick bought the Senators back in 2003, so 20 years ago, for $92 million. That's quite a return. So obviously his daughters, who are the current owners of the team, are set to make uh, quite a chunk of change. Uh, we'll have to get more details here soon. I don't think it'll be too long before we have more uh, info on the Senators' uh, sale, but uh, probably in the next few weeks, things should become a little bit more clear in that regard. Now, under the trade section of the video, we want to talk about the latest updates on Jonathan Tays and Patrick Kane. Of course, we're getting closer to the NHL trade deadline, which is certainly going to generate, uh, you know, a big buzz around these two guys. There's been lots of talk for the last several weeks and months as their futures were certainly considered. Uh, many feel that their futures are pretty much done. And it seems like Chicago wants to go in a different direction. Oh, and Elliot Friedman's latest 32 thoughts column, he references their Futures and talks about how it looks like the, the Hawks really want to move on. Um, doesn't sell it. There's a lot of interest there to even do a, a new contract to re-sign if these players want to stay. So the best case scenario for them, if they don't want to be traded, they refuse to be. They have that right in their contract. They could finish up the season, decide their futures in the offseason. And uh, if Chicago doesn't want to re-sign them, it doesn't matter what they want. If the interest isn't mutual, it's not going to happen. It's just that simple. And they may end up on new teams next year regardless, which is in my opinion, very high probability. But of course, when it comes to a trade, based on how things were sounding, based on comments from a Agent Papri saw, it sounds like the, uh, the decisions will be made at least 10 days ahead of the NHL trade deadline so that teams that are going to be considered by them will have time to negotiate and put together their offers to the Chicago Blackhawks to make a trade happen. So that tells me that they're very, very, very likely that they will agree to be moved but they're likely going to give a very, very small list of teams that are willing to take something to trade to. So, of course, they both have different teams that have been linked to them. Doesn't mean it's going to end up being those teams because at the end of the day, they call the shots. You know, a lot of people think Kane to, like, the Rangers or Vegas or one of those teams makes the most sense. Uh, you know, Jonathan Taze has been mentioned to, like, the Avalanche is a, a prime target. There was one point Boston was mentioned at all and how much that makes sense now uh, in other teams too. So even Winnipeg for, for Jonathan Taze, which is, Obviously, like, I'd be a homecoming for him going back to his hometown. So even though a trade does sound very likely, we're going to have to wait a little while longer before we really know what teams they're willing 
to go to. Uh, another mention in Elliot Freeman's 32 Thoughts column that came out this morning uh, was talking about James Van Dream's like, of course, the Flyers right here making $7 million. The final year of his contract, widely expected to be moved by the Flyers. They can retain 50% from the rest of this year, knocking that down to $3.5 and really, Van Reeves like is a guy with a lot of experience uh, and still a pretty decent goal scorer. He's not the quickest. He's not going to be, uh, you know, the most versatile player, but he can be used on the power play. Can be used as net front. Can be good and tight around the net. Play third line minutes for you and still give you some good amount of goal scoring. At least that appears like he still has it in him. Based on how the season has gone in Philly this year, and a team that he mentions in his article as being interested in JBR is the Minnesota Wild. We know the Wild likely are going to try to add. We know that they're likely going to be adding up front. Obviously, more scoring is something that the team is looking for. Uh, that's an area that they've struggled in. So it very well could be a good match there. There's a long rumor that they're going to likely trade Matt Dumba. I don't know if that would be a trade in that sense, per se. Um, I, I don't know that that makes sense for the Flyers to take Dumba on as a pending UFA. But at the same time, from a cap perspective, I can see the Wild, if they need to make room to bring in a forward like GVR, Dumba going to... Either the other way in that trade or to another team, if that makes more sense, depending on where GVR actually ends up. But for right now, Minnesota is a new team that's been linked to him through Elliot Friedman. ForFairy.com is reporting that the New York Islanders are reportedly interested in Ivan Barbashev of St. Louis. Uh, uh, Dave Pagnona of ForFairy.com believes that Lou and the Islanders are not going to be completely finished here after making the big splash and adding Bo Horvat, uh, that they're likely going to try to do one more move, and it's likely going to be. A middle six four to try to shore things up in that regard. Barbershop could be a good fit. Shouldn't come on a huge price tag. Uh, he's not making a ton of money. Uh, you know, a player in that two to three million dollar range uh, wouldn't be as difficult to fit in your salary cap. St. Louis could always retain a little bit if need be. Um, and of course, the Islanders to work that out for you know not a huge price tag going to the Blues. I mean, it'd be a good uh, you know lower price. Then uh, no, nowhere near what they paid for Orvat, and if Barbershop can get re-signed there as well, I mean he could be a solid, you know, middle six winger who can score 20, 25 goals for you. I think that potential is still there. He's still a fairly young player, like he's not old by any means. So uh, to me, it could be an interesting fit. I know there's still some thoughts of after Horvat that the Islanders might look to move Jean Gabriel Pangeau. Um, I wonder if St. Louis would have interest in him. He comes with a little bit of term. Whereas they have other guys like Tarasenko and O'Reilly expiring as well as Barbershop. Might be a player that interests them. Maybe that might be a fit that we might see. Uh, Free Sarah Valley is also reporting that another team to look out for when it comes to Brock Besser out of Vancouver might just be the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, the Penguins certainly are looking to make a few changes. Ron Hextall has been quiet, hasn't done a whole lot. They want to go for it every year they can with Latang, Crosby, Malkin in the mix there. Uh, you know that they're going to be... Uh, making additions to try to set themselves up to be as strong as possible. I know one area of concern, certainly goaltending and Tristan Jerry staying healthy. I don't know if we're going to see a goalie move, though, ahead of the playoffs. You never know, but I don't think it's likely. They have their, some of their own players, like Brian Dublin and Jason Zucker on expiring contracts. So, you know, if they don't re-sign them, they could certainly have room for a guy like Besser who comes with more than term, more term than just the current season. So, obviously, he could be a fit there. Not only this year, but beyond. And really, if Brock Besser is your prime example of a player in the league right now that needs a fresh start, new scenery, new line mates, just a, a do-over type of thing, and really put him on a line with either the Crosby or Malcolm in a top six role, and this guy might actually finally bring his goal-scoring touch to life that he's been expected to do for the last few years, but I've struggled in Vancouver. Don't know what the price tag would be. Uh, it's probably a scenario where... They're going to probably be able to get him cheaper than you ever thought you could get Brock Besser, given like he's not producing at a high enough level. I don't, between that and the contract, if the Penguins are going to take on that contract, I don't know if Vancouver would retain a little bit. They might if the offer is good enough, but it's still, it's a scenario that does make some sense. I think Frank Valley is on to something here. Um, I think Besser would be a terrific fit on one of those wings with Crosby or Malkin. Probably with Malkin more likely would be where they'd want to play him. But uh, we'll see. That that does make some sense as well. And uh, Joel Evanson in Montreal has been getting a lot of, uh, play, you know, certainly played in the rumor mill. Uh, lots of teams are interested. No given here that Montreal treats him like Josh Anderson. It appears as though the Habs are very reluctant to move either of these veteran guys. There are a couple guys that they probably really want to keep around to go through this rebuild. And uh, they need some veterans there to do that. And they certainly well-respected guys that fit well with the mold there. Uh, but the LA Kings are apparently very interested in Evanson. 
and they obviously have a ton of young players and prospects and draft currency they could offer Montreal to tempt them to make that trade. Edmondson doesn't have any trade protection in his contract, so can't uh, Hughes and Montreal decide to pull the trigger? A deal's a deal. If they don't want to offer up one of those good-looking prospects that uh, is likely not going to make it in L.A. because of the crowded uh, roster, then that might be too much for Montreal to pass up. It could be a good opportunity for the Hams to get a good young player in their system. Obviously, they have a fair bit of their own already, but still, you can never have too many when you're going through a rebuild because you don't know what's going to work out long-term. But uh, the interest is there, and this is not the first time we've heard a team showing interest in Edmondson. But the the trend so far has been that uh, Montreal doesn't really want to treat him. So unless you blow them away with an offer they can't refuse, it may not happen. But the interest is there. We'll see how much uh, Rob Blake and the Kings are willing to pony up if they can get a deal done or if the Hams decide to hang on to the veteran defenseman. Let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.